Welcome, welcome, everybody, to another Get to Know Your Creator Determined. This is a very determined man, by the way. Uh, he, he's he gone leaps and bounds uh, in his determination to get his book out there, get his campaigns funded, and get his eyes on the prize. Uh, before we uh, introduce the man himself, uh, let's bring on our lovely co-host. We have the amazing, great Angela Curry. What's going on, Angela? Not much. How are you, Jason? Oh, I am super. You are That's super. That's a little... It's a little sarcastic. Uh, no, I, uh, everyone knows I had a, a rotator cuff, uh, tore my rotator cuff, and I had yes. the surgery uh, Wednesday. So I'm not able to draw, uh, which so that bums me out. But uh, needless to say, the show must go on. Um, yes. And, uh, and we, absolutely. I, uh, the, the guests we have on, I, you know, we're, we're, we're friendly, and uh, I, I like his book. I love his, his, his stuff. His work is amazing. And uh, let's, let's stop kissing up to him and bring him on. What's up, Michael? <laughs> Why do you say it like that? We're friendly. <laughs> friendly. Well, I mean, <laughs> they all see us this way. They never see like the insults we sling backstage. So, you know, it's true. It's, <laughs> but it is true. I only insult my friends. It, you know what? Yeah. That's how you know I like you. If I don't insult you, why would I bother? You know, if I don't like you, why would I bother insulting you? It's waste exactly. Of time. Exactly. So how's how, dude? It's early for you, and you said you've been up a couple hours. How do you? I like. How are you? Are you awake? Yeah, of course. This is my most productive time of the day between 5 a.m. and about 9 a.m. Is that because everyone's get sleeping? business done? Pretty much, yeah. You're probably the cat's quiet up. at the house. The cat. Oh, the cats really don't bother, do too much to bother you. Isn't uh, it a kitten? Yeah. Or is it it's a cat now? I would call it a cat. If I had found it, if it had come to my door at this size, I would have called it a cat, yes. Still okay. technically uh, a kitten, oh. but. Right. Yeah, you go by you go by age as far as like yeah. calling them kittens to cats and young adults and stuff like that. Well, before we get started, we have a, we have an amazing chat, Angela. Let's say hi to who's in the chat. Oh, the first one that joined us today, Fanta. Hold on, my computer. What's up, Fanta? Yeah, Fanta's go. here. She says hello. What's up, Fanta? Hello. We got Citizen Ronan What's in the house. Hail Ronan. Don't mind the mind uh, yeah potato internet and then here is duck bacon is in the house hail duck bacon yo what's up duck and bacon we, good to see you we got bob here hey bob hail, what's up bob and then sumo theory is in the house hail sumo hail sumo aloha a, sumo good say and we got mo biggs what's up mo? Yep. mo biggs wherever bancroft is mo biggs <laughs> is. <laughs> and we got henry hey. is here hey what's up henry Mate. good to see you ACC, uh, here hey, little ACC, what's going on? I, I see why you do this ahead of time, but then again, I usually don't have you. You have fans, Bancroft. You have fans, and they want to see you uh, make a, make a fool of me on on the stream. So, yeah. Paulus. Oh. Actually, I need to share oh, this. Paulus. What am I doing? Paulus Arts. Oh yeah, that'd be cool. Yo, what's up, Paulus Arts? Yeah, he's a he's a watcher. So. He's, I've seen him around. He's a good guy. Yeah, uh, yeah, we have we have. You have, the more people come in, this is crazy. It's good to see you all. Um, before we get started, Hail. the link to Bancroft's website is pinned to, in the description below, as well as in the top of the chat. So if you want to skip all this crap and just be like, I want to see the book and back it, go ahead. Do it. I encourage you. And if you're watching on Facebook, you know, leave a comment, like it. We'll see it in the stream yard. So, um, Lucentcomic.com or bogangogo.com. Either or. There's a boging go go. It'll work. That's fantastic. <laughs> I mean, it is a lot of go go going if you on. Type in bogangogo.com. It will also work. That's fantastic. I love it. Nice. Yeah, I pinned I pinned it to the uh, to to all the necessary things plus your Twitter and and stuff like that. So, so yeah, I thank you for coming on. You know, I know you, you're a very busy man, very busy schedule. Um, and I because I know the kind of job you have. So you have like two full time jobs with the comic and your regular job. So what wanted you to get into comics in general? Because uh, your job is a good job. You know, what makes you want to be like, hey, I want to get into comics and maybe not make any money. Like, what, what kind of sparked that <laughs> what idea? What makes you want to go into the business that's the hardest way to make maybe a little bit of money? Yeah, yeah if you're lucky. <laughs> uh, that's a good question. I didn't, I didn't think I had a choice. I had a story. 
you need to get the story out. There's something that I don't know drives you. I've given up plenty of pretty lucrative kind of side businesses because I always just kind of veered back towards I want to tell a story. And uh, as far as I'm aware, the only way to tell that story is uh, through in the comic book form. Right. So here I am. And that's what I'm doing. I'd sort of fallen out of comics before doing this. And even when I started it, I didn't really get back into comics. I was reading a lot of web comics just because mm -hmm. that was the scene I was in. It was Zach who brought me back to comic books yeah, boy, yeah. Uh, in 2017. And, um, you know, since then I've got up so many, mostly CG books, mostly some indie CG. books. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I never, I mean, past the age of about 14, I never wanted to be an, a comic book artist. Um, I always wanted to tell stories. That, that goes way back. That, right. If you had to ask me when I was five what I wanted to do, I would have said, I want to write books or i want to write movies or something like that always oh, that's so pretty. that's see, why i'm that's, here that's interesting you see if you ask back then you would say right and you're a very talented illustrator so like if your first like what got you into the illustrating part then if your main thing initially was to like write these things same thing uh always drew always enjoyed it uh i was the art guy even though I, I I didn't I didn't really think I was, but apparently I was, and people tell me <laughs> I was, and I didn't even realize. My school called me up, you know, a year after I graduated, and said, "Come back, and we'll give you the art prize for last year." I was like, "Really, <laughs> really me? Wow. All right, I already graduated." And, um, yeah, I was like, "All right, cool." Uh, but you know, so I was always drawing. You know, it, I was it was easy to buy me a gift. It's like I'll just buy Michael one of those. You know, how to draw books. I love them. Yep. Um, uh, so yeah, you taught yourself like how that. to draw. Is that right? It's yeah, yeah. Just I mean, it was, we're talking the eighties and early nineties. So okay. a lot of just drawing what was in books. A lot of tracing mm -hmm. back then. Uh, and then you know you start. To, all right. Well, I want to draw my own characters. So you got to learn how to actually uh, do that. And um, yeah, I. I never really dropped it, but I did, I did different things. You know, I got into printing, printmaking, painting, um, whatever, uh, right. screen printing. But um, yeah, so I always was doing something. I never quit that. So right. that was just luck <laughs> that, you know, when I, when I thought, oh, maybe I could make a comics, it's because I knew I could draw to an extent. I still had a lot to learn. I was well, very rusty on the whole you know, character drawing and everything, but we right. got there in the end. Well, I think uh, every, no matter how good you are, you have something to learn. Like you, you could be a, a master, so to speak. And you have like, you there's, it's art. You never really fully master it. You just mm -hmm. keep improving over the years and learning different techniques yep. and different ways to go about things. So, yeah. And, but you can still fine tune to like, look at Jim Lee. He's got his set style. He's good. He's, he's not going to really do much more because he already knows what to do and it works for him. But then you have people, you know, like, I see what you do, with, uh, and I know you get this a lot, and I don't know if it's old and cliche, but your backgrounds mm. are the best I've ever seen. Like, what make gives because that takes time and patience. Like, how did you develop that kind of a patience to sit there and get uh, that, like the Eiffel Tower you did? Insanity, mm. man. So, <laughs> like, how do, you, how do you manage to sit there and just, do you zone out? Do you listen to music? What do you do? always i always had that ability i don't know why i don't know how and it yeah it's one of those things where i'm like surprised that other people don't have that patience um mm. but uh yeah it's just always been there you know even back in school um when as soon as i realized i could draw pretty well with pencils uh you know you draw some kind of a, a realistic thing with colored pencils you know i, I remember sitting down and just drawing a camera you know, like a study of a camera with pencils. So it looked almost photorealistic. It took me about eight hours. Oh, and wow. yeah, there's no one else in school who was anywhere doing anything near that. And I just, I don't know. I just, I guess I like it. I, I like having a little task to do. And if I can see it in my mind and I know what it looks like, I want it to look like that as close as I can. Um, and you know, I just keep hacking at it until I get there, essentially. Sometimes it takes a long time. 
Yeah, I was watching that one stream you had uh, where you drew Ella in pencil, like you were you graphite mm-hmm. using the pencils or something. And initially, I didn't know you were doing it only in pencil because I'm an idiot and I didn't read the the you know the the caption. But I was like, I was like, don't ink that, please don't ink that. That looks awesome. And then I see you shade and shade, and I'm like, oh, he's not going to ink that. I'm like, he, this is a pencil, and it was beautiful, man. You, like it, it, like I said, you zone. It's almost like you you go into a zone and you just like you kind of yeah, yeah. do it, you Definitely. know and. I love that. I can appreciate that because you've seen me draw and I'm kind of like a let's get to the point and quick kind of do it kind of guy. And I when I, I try to slow down, but it's really hard to have that restraint. So do you find it difficult then to speed up to like, you know, yes. get... yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the hard part for me is to go, all right, come on, we're going to get this going to get this done. And I, I constantly when I'm working on new pages, especially if I haven't drawn for a little while, you know, if I've been coloring or doing other stuff. I put in other examples of stuff I've previously done around me to say, no, it has to look something oh, like cool. this. So don't get crazy with it. You know, draw it like this. You know, okay. don't labor the point. Um, because sometimes, yeah, especially especially on the interiors, you have to get them done. It's not a, they're not the cover art. They're not pinups. Right. They're interiors. You have to, there's a speed to them you have to do. And also the consistency as well. Right. So, yes, that is a constant struggle where I have to remember. No, no. Just calm down on the details sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, I like... uh... Oh, go ahead, Angela. No, the catacombs. I remember that one stream, I think, where you drew all those little skulls and stuff. I mean, that was probably... Crazy. The the detail in that. And I mean, it was just like... The end, I was like... Away. It was yeah. Amazing. Sometimes there is. Sometimes it does call for detail because th- that impact needs to be there, and that's a very that th- that's probably the most important place in the whole story. So the introduction to it has to there has to be an impact, right? Um, and uh, <clears throat> you know, so you just got to put the detail in. See, and I liked what uh, Kennedy had said. I remember watching him a few times, and I haven't watched him in a bit, but he even said, he's like, you know, maybe, like, if you have three panels, like, if one of them's, make that one, like, a banger. The other one's maybe, like, 70% bangers because you're working at a speed. You want these interiors to get done, you know, so you kind of can't have 1,000% in every panel, even though you want to. And Mm -hmm. he said, but as long as you have, like, a panel, like, a key panel or something that's that is just killer, He's like you're pretty. You did your job. Like you, you did your work. And Kennedy's been in this business forever, so he knows what you know. He knows what he's talking about. So yeah. I like that advice, and I kind of try to. I follow it to some degree. I mean, I do sometimes go too far in, in depth on things, and like you, you. So how did you go about coloring? Did you ever like? Did you start? You started traditional, obviously, as a kid. But like, what got you into the uh, digital aspect of coloring? How how did you gear into that? Again, necessity. What's up, Jim Cox? Um the so when i really started getting back into art this is probably talking about 2009 maybe Mm -hmm. maybe a bit earlier um i uh i was doing t-shirt designs and stuff like that and they started pretty basic and straight away i loved the scene i i loved the whole competitiveness of it Uh, there was a cool kind of community around it everyone was uh, you know, uh, kind of, it was very, it was a lot like CG back in mm. those days. You know, it was, there's a lot of memeing. Um, and, uh, but they were really good and they were really diverse in terms of what they were doing. Some guys had a set style. Some guys just did whatever they wanted. And I was just copying everyone's style, just having fun. Like, oh, I love what this guy did here with that shading. I'm going to do something like that. So I would just try that style. And then someone was doing digital painting style. I'll, I'll try that. Uh, someone was doing something a bit more um, graphic. All right, cool. I'll try that. So it was just, it was a good four years of me just having fun, just doing crazy stuff. And because it was competitive, mm-hmm. I had to step up every time and get better. And I became pretty well known in that scene um, and, you know, won a bunch of uh, contests and stuff. And it just, yeah, it, it just that kind of started the whole development of my eye for art and color and everything. Mm-hmm. And when I started doing the colors on the comic, they were pretty 
you know, it's kind of basing them a little bit off the one specific book that I had, a French, you know, French Bon Dessiné book. Yeah. Um, and I think I was kind of trying to ape this guy's coloring style, but I didn't really understand the fundamentals. So right. it came out kind of muddy. It came out kind of flat. Uh, it came out kind of wishy-washy. So when it came time to actually you know, print my book, I, I knew I had to revisit that. So uh, I went, I just did what I always did, just hit up YouTube. <laughs> yep. And just started devouring color theory techniques, tricks, tips. Um, the biggest one I watched was Colors with Kurt. Uh, and yeah, just learned it and applied it. And I, I, I hit on a technique which is the sort of cut and grad technique that right. i could i knew i could do on the interiors so right. i can do more uh but and i've done more on covers and pinups and stuff but for the interiors i found a style all right i can do this in the interiors at a pace and it looks good right uh, and, and it tells the story made. most importantly it tells the story so that's yeah that's how and, that and, all came about and it, it fits the ambiance the atmosphere of of the book and the story itself yes like you, yeah it that's doesn't throw it off important. it's not like candy colors uh, you know everywhere that would totally like annihilate this thing but um you know you you, you have a, a wonderful eye for color and, and it's just even even ink spots he was looking through lucid he's like it's like i hate bancroft he shouldn't be just <laughs> coloring <laughs> so which i don't know if well, I, I just watched some that, youtube but, videos and you know <laughs> Well, no, and that's it, the it, thing. It, it was a good it was a good long period of time and I was drawing the whole time and then I would while I was drawing or I, I would watch coloring videos and then mm -hmm. jot down points and stuff and then I would spend an hour or so um, working on the colors uh, it's, yeah, and phenomenal. that yeah that, that period of time I went from this very bland dull desaturated colors which you can see in the um, unedited edition to yeah, I have what it. it ended up with <laughs> in the thing yeah exactly yeah yeah and, and do you ever work with like watercolors currently now or like like color pencils like you are you just no you just, i like, haven't gone for fun i never no i never was really great at the traditional watercolors i mm -hmm. did some i did actually manage to figure out how to do some really cool digital watercolors mm -hmm. um because i was just on such a digital kick when i was doing the t-shirts and stuff but uh, I never went really went back. I was pretty I was pretty good at the pencils, the colored pencils back in the day. I didn't even have mm -hmm. a set anymore. Oh. Um I just was I always figured, look, this is the way I'm going forward uh with with the digital, so I never really I the the, the wa digital watercolors were okay, it was fine, but it was a lot of faffing around to get what was probably right. you know pretty super easy if you just did it traditionally and I just I, I knew I wasn't going to do that. Yeah, I mean, I, I I like traditional watercolors. I play with them, but it, it's actually easier digital because you can control Z it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you, you can't really do, like, you can kind of do it, like, what, but traditionally, but it still shows through and stuff like that. And Carl Painter has a great watercolor, uh, but I guess Photoshop's keeping up with it now, too. But uh, anyway, I digress. But uh, do you remember your first comic book? That I read? No, yeah, that you bought and read or, or, or gotten read. Yeah, it's sitting around here somewhere. I always nice. keep it close. I always keep it close oh, that's by. that's cool. Not too many people actually still have theirs. That's awesome. Uh, it might be... Hold on a sec. Yeah. And by a the way, stack if you of stuff here, it's questions probably in you. the chat, uh, you know, you feel free to ask. Um, it's a, it was a web of Spider-Man. Oh, there. I Check got it from the... Welcome, welcome. Do I have it? Maybe I don't. And uh, like I mm. said, click the links if you want to go ahead and check out uh, the Bancroft's website. He's got all this fun stuff. It was it was a there. it was a web of Spider Man. I think it was number eighty three mm. from memory, something like that. And uh, I mean, I'd had a couple of comics before that. Um, well, case in point, actually. Oh. Uh, What's up, Tom? Just ripped it. It's all right. It's old. Yeah, it's okay. is, I, I got I got this one at a uh, oh, wow. at a train station. Yeah, I was probably wow. Um, <laughs> nice. This will be eight or nine. I've read this so many times. Victoria's read it. She loves it. That's so uh, cool. It's, yeah, it's from the '60s. It's color too. 
It looks oh, look great. It still looks nice. great. Oh my yeah. God. And their stories are really fun too. Victoria's read this uh -huh. like 50 times. Oh, the, and the pages are still white. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm surprised just... by that. Wait, how old were you when you when you got that? Yeah, probably about eight. But it, it was old oh, then. I mean, it's from the great. 60s. It's was right. published it. in 66. Nice. So, but you know, that, that I didn't start collecting comics. I just had this one. And, right. Um, but uh, no, my okay. friends, I went over to my friend's house and they had all these comics. Um, so my friend was into G.I. Joe and Iron Man and my other friend were, was into X-Men. And this is, nice. we're talking 1991. So this is, you know, peak X-Men. And uh, so I was like, all right, well, I'll go down down to the what we have news agencies they had big stores magazines and they had a huge comic section back then absolutely huge they had every comic you could imagine all the independents obviously marvel and dc and then some other you know big ones like phantom and right and judge dread and stuff like that and uh so i just picked the one that i knew the character and obviously everyone knows spider-man from cartoons mm -hmm. and stuff like that yep so it looked pretty cool. I picked up Web of Spider-Man. I read it and I was like, yeah, this is for me. I love this. And I think in a couple of a couple of issues later, some amazing Spider-Mans came out and it was just so cool. It was a big gatefold cover. It's a <laughs> cardiac and this yep. massive fight and there was Punisher. And I was like, this is the best, you know, because I'm 11 years old. I'm an 11-year-old boy. And this is back when those comics were written for 11 year old boys that's what right. that was the target market yep. and i was just in 100 percent uh and i was i was in a really hard call till about probably the mid 90s when i think it all kind of started to fall apart for marvel mm -hmm. um yeah and uh they started they started making it so you know to follow the story that i was reading you have to buy this other all these other books that i don't read and i'm yep. like you know i have a limited budget here <laughs> exactly <laughs> so yeah what was the uh, comment, question what was oh the question? yeah well there was earlier uh time scales basically said uh he said he watched you when you went to sleep he watched you when you wake up and he's basically wondering he's just like when does <laughs> he was like when does he sleep anyone <laughs> sure this guy is an ai or hologram i'm real and i'm then, real no i've, I've real. been i was sleeping uh, i was sleeping all night this is yeah. probably, I don't know, when you guys are not watching YouTube. Well, that's that's a funny thing. Like, he's not wrong because, you know, I live on the East Coast of the U.S. So you, you're you pretty much streaming whenever I go to bed. But also you're, I see your videos of your live whenever I, I do wake up because our time zones are so different. Yeah. So Well, it, it, also as well, funny. I've been streaming a lot this been, last yeah. week. I think yesterday I did 10 and a half hours. I counted oh, a lot. Oh, wow, man. Yeah, so, I didn't know where you well, were not because every time I was watching something, you were Press on, junket. So. Yeah, as you say, your campaign's up. It's been up for like a week, right? So, you know, you want to... Yeah. You want to you want to keep you want to keep promoting mm -hmm. keep 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 fresh keep out there and keep getting exactly. backers so yeah I mean that's and I even said it before I, I mean I like it but I hate it I, I love talking with everybody talking with the chat and everything but but after the first few days even of, of promoting you're so exhausted you're like man I just want to draw some, some stuff so uh, yeah it's it's great oh, I've been drawing I've been working so it's um you know it's not uh I have been doing stuff while, uh, so, you know, especially with someone else's stream, I'll be working in the background. Um, right. You know, doing Yeah, I prefer to be on a time. stream and, and uh, you mm -hmm. know, like, if, like, the, like it, not a promotional stream, but like I'll go in 80s or bars or something and then I'll, I'll, I'll draw because I could talk and draw yeah. at the same time. So yeah. it's not a problem. Is this another question here, Angel? Yeah, well, there's a whole there just commenting that he, he got color with Kurt's coloring course and trying to learn digital coloring nice and, kurt goes uh, really in depth there's so much to learn i probably do about 20 to 30 percent of what he does on hey, his hey. colors he has uh, this that's the cool thing about it um you can pick and choose what you want to take from his techniques for your stuff so yeah you know just say there's a hundred techniques that he'll teach you you might only need to know 15 or 20 to be able to achieve what you need to achieve but you can pick and choose what that 15 or 20 are so that's why i always recommend that um if you want to learn yeah how to digitally color comics it's, it's a nice. pretty good wealth of knowledge over there well i even like I, I i've done like art shows and stuff like that you know peter you have your booth or table and people are like oh you know how did you learn or what they, they'd be like oh i might be going to art college i'll tell them don't 
save your money, watch YouTube videos. You don't need a degree yeah. to do this. Now, granted, maybe you do if you want to get into like graphic design. I don't know 100% on that. But like architecture for sure. But if you want to draw just comic books, don't don't waste your time. Just don't do it. it go on YouTube. Don't waste your money because uh, uh, you owe thousands upon thousands of dollars to an art college. Just save your money. I don't even think cool. you need to go for graphic design anymore. The, the last girl really? I worked with, you know, she was fresh out of stuff. university and they didn't even when she went to university they didn't even ask her they didn't even want to see a portfolio they just oh jeez let her come in you know because she she applied and i was like all right that's interesting that wasn't like that when i was there and um and when i think about it no job i've ever had has ever asked me where i went to school never they just want to know what you've worked on previously Right. It's like most jobs. So what's your experience? And when I think about it, I did uh, I did about a year, maybe two years as a freelance designer working for an agency. They would send me out all over the friggin' city. Um, and to get that job, to be able to do that, I just had to take a test. I just went into their, into their offices and sat down and took a one hour long test on all the, on all the programs that I would need to know. They tested me. I passed. I was a freelancer. So yeah, go onto YouTube, mm -hmm. l learn how to be proficient in all the applications. And uh, you know, if you start when you're 15, by the time you're ready to get out there and become a designer, just say, you know, five years later or something, you'll be super proficient Without and a doubt. then just become a freelancer, get a couple of years of experience under your belt and you're good. You then bypass yep. the entire, you won't get in indoctrinated into some weird Marxist cult which I did <laughs> um, unknowingly, <laughs> uh, you know, it's, and, right. and then you won't have this massive debt. I don't know. Right. Yeah, that's... To me, that's the biggest thing is that that it's insurmountable. It's ridiculous. And it shouldn't cost that much. If you want to learn like a, to draw, like, it's just ridiculous. Uh, like, uh, well, back when I was like in the nineties that, you know, YouTube wasn't up and even in the early two thousands. So, like college was like you were supposed to go they ingrained it into your head you got to go to college you got to go to college you got to go to college and so we all thought we had to go to college and now with youtube out there forget about it you don't like there's certain like obviously if you want to be a doctor you got to go to college you want to be a lawyer you got to go to college but there's certain there's plenty of things that you could do out there that don't require a degree like art or something like that where you can make decent money if you're good at it you know graphic design comics you got to love this to really get into comics because and have a second job, especially if you're starting out. Unless you're super lucky and you're super talented, and you you know you're you're, you're a get go right out the gate. It's very rare that that happens. But I see Time Scales is asking what my educational background is in arts. I studied. Uh, I did a bachelor uh, uh, with honors um, in communication design and graphic design. It started as gra graphic design, but then they changed it for some reason. I don't know. Now, do you think and the I communication graduated first class? Did the communication so special... design help with the YouTube stuff? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what it is. <laughs> no, you don't learn shit. No, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> At nice. university, you get out of it what you put into it. And uh -huh. I was in almost everything. I was already way ahead of um, the kind of lowest common denominator, which is what they teach. So, for instance, multimedia design, I'd already been building websites, working in Flash animation, doing HTML, Dreamweaver stuff, uh -huh. um, yep. you know, anime, animated GIFs and all that kind of stuff. I mean, this, we're talking back in the early 2000s. So that was sort of really the extent of it. Right. And I went in there to the first class and it was like how to code a button. <laughs> and I was like, yep. what the? Yeah. This is university? Yep. So, yeah, I just was like, I'm going to go sit in the corner and actually do stuff. Um, <laughs> but I'm just going to be in the in the class so that I get the credit. Um, right. And the, and the lecture was like, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's like that a lot of the time. Uh, you know, so with, no. with the like, I went to the art, like a college, or pretty much a college mill. I went to the Art Institute of Fort Lauderdale. But when I first got in, you had to have a portfolio. You, they had to see your stuff. They, they, you got in based on your merit. Like, at, like you said, it was after a few years though. It happened to me. What happened to you is like people were they were just accepting people, 
And I even, even though I went in, they didn't have an illustration to program at first. So I went in for graphic design or animation at first. And then uh, they offered the illustration one. I even, even while in school, I had to show another portfolio to get into the illustration program. But, and luckily for me, I at least had great teachers. Like the college itself, terrible. I owe insane amount of money. But the teachers themselves were amazing. And I'm still friends with a, a lot of them now. Even one of them uh, colored one of Frega's uh, things, like on his own, did watercolor thing on it. Fre and him and Frega kind of like met in a way online because of it. So it's like, it, it's and he's a phenomenal artist. His name is Jonathan Hunt. But uh, I, I gotta give him props. But yeah. So, it, but even there, if I never went to college, I probably still would have met that professor because I met Frega you know, and hung out with him. And then I would have seen Frega share that Batman thing. And I probably would have accepted added him as a friend and it could have gone on from there. So like going to college helped with meeting cool people. I loved it, but yeah, it does help it, with some things that, that is true. But, uh, it, it, like the, it, it kind of, it puts you in a mindset. It gets you out of that mindset you have when you're at high school where you're just doing everything. And mm -hmm. then that was the first time I was 100% focused on one enterprise which was graphic design and yep. i was uh you know that was my whole thing so and on top of that school had a um uh what do you call it like you know you got there and you work for a year mm -hmm. program internship um exactly so that was invaluable i got a yep. job at the government and it was it's it, it sounded boring but it was the best job out of anyone in the entire year because i got to work on these big um projects that uh, you know, had tons of money funneled into them and uh, you know all the, well they were all getting coffee i was designing actual <laughs> things nice. that were getting printed on hundreds of thousands of units and stuff that's awesome and i actually got paid you know i actually oh nice yeah usually you don't get paid what, for an internship yeah yeah yeah, yeah that, that's right some people just got compensation <laughs> which mm -hmm. was the worst yep. but i actually got paid i think i made twenty thousand dollars which for me as a i probably was 20 years old i mean that was that's that's I mean, a lot of money twenty thousand yeah. dollars i mean while you're living at home i mean that's a lot of money and i actually used yep. that money to travel to france to germany um to so i could study a year in germany and oh, that's, that's where i so met cool. mel you know it's all right. a cascade yep. effect but uh so cool. um the uh yeah the, that experience was invaluable i learned more in that 11 months working than i did in the whole four years at the thing and also because i worked really hard um so that when it started when i applied there were ten thousand applicants to get into this course and they culled that down to um i think a couple hundred who oh, wow. got through the uh interview Proof. period mm -hmm. um so that was into year one and they said by the second year there'll be Heart, less than half of you still in in second year and that was true that happened and every year subsequently there's not as much of a drop off in between second and third because that's when you get your actual bachelors right. um but uh the fourth year is is the honors year and you have to apply for that and they only take a select few so from that initial ten thousand that applied uh, i think there were 12 of us in oh, wow. honors and um i was one of only two i think that graduated first class so that was a benefit because anytime there was a job that popped up for a couple of years after i was sort of like one of the go-to guys hey there's a there's a three-day job over in you know someplace in town right. if you want it and i'm like yes so that i that was you know, a thing that I wouldn't have had if I didn't yeah. go to university, but I had to work for it. You know, that was, that was yeah. two, the 12 people out of, te out of, uh, you know, 10,000 actually. That's crazy. That's pretty cool. You know, had access to that. So nice. Yeah. Is it, amazing. Is it a question? Uh, yeah. Um, time scales. And uh, please ask Bancroft if he had mentors around him, like family or friends that encouraged him to pursue his talents. My family was always very supportive. Mm -hmm. even though they worried you know getting into the arts and then they worried yeah, when i got into risky. poker my god <laughs> um they don't want you to be eating but, cat food for like the rest of your yeah, life yeah 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 but i've always <laughs> been you know I, I i never just say oh i'm giving up my job to go and you know make comics it's always been a sort of i'll just put it on top of everything else and we'll build it from there and that's worked so far 
Um, so yeah, family's always been super supportive. Uh, they, you know, my mother's in awe of what I do. So I can't believe you can do this. And, Aww, and I was like, cool. but there are people who can are so much better than me. It's like, yeah, but yeah. Anyway, um, <laughs> as for mentors, uh, I mean, that's what's great about YouTube and comics game. You can mm -hmm. actually rub shoulders with literal legends. Yep. And hang out and get drunk with Artie Bear <laughs> and Hello, Ethan Van Skyver. Yep. And you can meet <laughs> Kenneth Roquefort and oh, yeah. y you know all these people and yeah so you can i mean you yep. can just rub shoulders with them and do one uh, that, of the that's amazing one of the greatest things ever so far was like i was on a art auction with on red valkyrie and roquefort was on with me and i was showing my stuff he's like he's like wow that's really good i'm like kenneth roquefort just said my artwork's good i'm like i know that's right? so cool I, <laughs> kenneth backed my book and i was like that that's a huge compliment right there. That's massive. Me. That's I mean, massive, dude. Yeah. Kelsey, yeah. Kelsey Shannon and Kenneth Roquefort backed the book dude, within Kelsey, a couple of hours. And I was just like, All right. Kelsey's one of my favorites, dude. He's so down to earth, so funny, so cool. And you can tell he loves comics. Like this is a guy that just like, that's all he wants to talk about. It's what he loves, it's what he loves doing. I, Kelsey is one of my favorite humans. Uh, and that I don't know. <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah. So, I always say Kelsey is the best of us. That's what I always he say. Is. He is. You know what? You're not wrong. Kelsey. You're you're right. It, it, he really is. Uh, he's a, a good representation of what, what CG is and what uh, comic yeah. fans are. Because okay. he's a fan. Uh, but we are too, you know. And like you said, Spider-Man, that was one of your first books. Like, let's say the industry was fantastic. Every, the stories are great. Everything's wonderful. If you got offered to draw like a Spider-Man off spinoff, would you like be like, yeah, definitely? Or would you think... Uh, no. really not my bag. I, I think there's probably a thousand more qualified people to be able to do that. Um, I don't even know if I would be able to handle, I would be able to land that style. I did a piece for Michael Oden, um, mm -hmm. where I actually did uh, check out a lot of Spider Man um, kind of pictures to sort of, because I wanted to do a, because I always thought uh, the embrace was very Spider Man esque, yes. the character. Yep. So I was like, I want to get a Spider Man type pose. Um, and I think I did pretty well with it, but it, I don't think it's really, I don't know if it's my wheelhouse. And I, again, I'm not here to be a comic book artist. I am, I am the artist on my book because that's part of telling the story to me. And right. I'm, I want to tell my story. That's sort of what I'm doing here. So well, yeah, I, I would, I would <laughs> to work on a, on a, you know, on six issues or something of a, of a book that to me is, is, I start to my my hand starts to shake and I start to sweat. Like that yeah. that's a lot of work for someone else's thing. I, it, I don't know is. if I can I can do well, that. Yeah, I asked because I'll uh, read it if it's good, but that's I, about I, it. Uh, I asked because Death Metal Hero and uh, Ink Spots they have a Do You Even Read? And they were reading. They were going over the Lucid. They didn't spoil it. Like they were just showing things, and they were right. Like there's because the way you do backgrounds is immaculate. You know, and your perspectives are great. Your your anatomy spot on. So the way you some of the panels even kind of like that could be a Spider Man panel. Like it just looks like just because of the way the character is positioned in the panel with like the backdrop and the sky. Like it would be. You would, I, I mean, it would fit in that regard, but I do see what you're saying. Like, you know, stylistically, maybe, maybe not. I, I don't know. I mean, there's different styles everywhere, though. So, yeah, you know, look, my book is a bit more like something like um, Sandman, I would, I would yeah, say. It's, I agree it's, with know, that. It's a little bit more cerebral, a little bit more, it's about the weird things that are happening rather than, I, you know, when I think of Spider-Man, I think Mark Bagley, I think... Uh, Bushama, I think those sorts of artists, yeah. and that's what I want to see. Uh, right. Ryan Otley has absolutely been crushing, uh, you know, whenever he works on Spider Man, and that like that's what I want, would want to see right. on a Spider Man. Yeah, you know what you like, and you're like, yeah, that's not my like. What would you think? Yeah. Like, let's say, like I know you said Sandman, but like out of aside from that, what do you think maybe would be like the one character or, or person you would want to like? You'd be like, hey, I'd have fun doing that. Uh, well, I don't know. <laughs> I I don't even think about drawing comics to be honest. I just draw okay. my own stuff. No, that's cool. I, man. I've drawn. You know, I, I used to draw Spawn. I used to draw Spider Man. Okay. I did love drawing Spider Man, but that was back in the day. Um, right. Ghost Rider. I love Ooh, Ghost Rider. There you go. You, yeah, you do flames, skulls very well. That would be the pretty. Bike. Dope. 
the bike. Yeah, the, the leather bike jacket, would be immaculate. The chain. Yes. Yeah, probably let's uh, say Ghost Rider. That's that that's where I would fit. That I think that would fit your style. That would that so, would be kind of cool to see. That would be So you're more you, Marvel than DC then? Is that what you're saying? Oh yeah, yeah. I don't I don't know anything yeah. about DC. Everyone talks about DC stuff. I, I, it's just, <laughs> just, I just sit there with a glazed look over my eyes. I had the first <laughs> Batman book. I I I grabbed the Spawn versus Batman back in the mm -hmm. day, which wasn't that good. And no. that was really like the only book I ever read a Batman book. And then your boy Zach showed me uh, the Sean Gordon Murphy Batman series. Yep. Uh, I bought that mini series. I read that. I thought that was pretty cool. And then I, I grabbed a couple of others, but that's it. I mean, that's my full DC contingent. I, I know nothing mm -hmm. about it. Obviously, I know Batman. I know the Rogues Gallery. I know Superman. I know Lex Luthor, but other than that yeah I mean... you know the mains I, i'm the same way i was we were marvel guys growing up and there was some some dc in there but we only know the main characters we really don't know like the offshoots and like all, all the other characters and stuff we know a lot of marvel we were marvel mm. uh, yeah so we, we were in the same boat and like you even talk about phantom and judge dread those are like big in australia though right uh like yes. they weren't huge here so yeah no they're massive here so there's always there's even now to this day i go to the post office there will be an issue of a new issue of phantom in the post office it's nice <laughs> so, yeah wasn't that popular yeah. phantom wasn't it? dread a little more uh but uh phantom it was like almost non-existent in my comic shops uh there was like there was some dread and uh i like uh judge death i believe that's his name he's, he's mm -hmm. dope man. but uh that would be a cool one and i like the dread movie that was that was awesome i don't know what your thoughts on it why did you even see it i don't even think you saw it <sighs> Is that is that the one with Sylvester Stallone? Uh, no, yeah. that's that's Judge Dredd. Urban. Or er, yeah, that's the the other one uh, is with. Isn't the Australian? No, we tried to watch that one with Keith um, Urban. I, yeah, because yeah, everyone was telling me how good it was, and you Mel and like I it? were sitting there, and we were like, I don't think we got through fifteen minutes. We were like, this, I don't think this is for, for me, and she was like, I'm not even watching. It's like, all right, well. Like, oh, so dude, you it like so the good. Stallone one more? That's interesting. I don't know because everyone talks about yeah. You always. I don't remember. That. I don't remember <laughs> liking the Stallone one. Like, he didn't say that. It. Yeah, he just <laughs> oh, okay. <it>. Yeah. <laughs> Put words in your mouth. I was Sorry. never. I was never a Dread <laughs> fan. I, you know, it was. It was never really my thing. I've read anything. maybe five. I've got five of the. Comics. Oh, okay. You, you were more were okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. No. I. I've got a Phantom. I've got a Phantom Omnibus actually around here oh, somewhere nice. that uh yeah i love that i love that stuff did, I, I did you like the uh, billy zane style. movie yeah yeah i thought it was yeah. pretty good yeah, yeah. yeah I, mean, I mean it was could... kind of back in the back in those days comic book movies were a bit campy what, even what even year then, was the but... billy zane phantom oh, was it early 90s i think yeah. yeah 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 they're a bit they're a bit uh they didn't, they didn't have any edge to them. You know, they, they weren't, there was no grittiness yeah. into them. Was, okay, pretty... yeah. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll get to the key That's theme fine. in a second here. And by the way, if you're impatient, you don't want to wait for that, uh, click the link in the top of the chat or in the description below to take you right to Bancroft's thing, and you can back all of this stuff. Um, but I want to ask real quick, because uh, I have mentioned uh, uh, we, we both like Carnival, and which I was surprised that you've heard of them. What other kind of uh, music do you listen to while you draw? Or do you like just, uh, like, what kind of, do you do that? What, how do you Depends on the mood. So, uh, so in, you know, in the same vein as Carnival, um, <laughs> Dead Letter Circus is a good mm -hmm. one. They're sort of like my de facto Lucent band. Nice. Um, which is a local Australian. Oh. Uh, they actually toured a lot with Carnival and uh, uh, Birds of Tokyo and th th those sort of bands. Um, but I've have I have playlists, and it's just, it really just depends on my mood. You know, sometimes I just want to listen to old '60s songs. Sometimes I want right. to listen to um, uh, kind of melancholy songs. It it really depends on what I'm drawing, and uh, you know, it's yeah, I, I've got. I'm always listening to music when I when I draw. Oh, yeah, so you if like the Lucy got option for a movie, would you think Dead Letter Circus would be like the kind of the band you'd be like? Hey, Absolutely. I want you guys to do and Mel hates them, so she's like, "No, <laughs> don't use them." Like, no, but it's it's. I mean, they've been such an inspiration. I, you know, I remember I used to go to their gigs quite a bit. I think I've seen them about five times, and nice. uh, I would always just like. I'm like living in the Lucent right now. It was so <laughs> oh, good. Nice. 
<laughs> nice. That's cool. Yeah, I, I'm big on music, and you know, I'm I death metal in here, and I kind of have similar taste, but his stuff is a little heavier than mine. But uh, but yeah. So uh, I was just curious because not too yeah, many. Yeah, Carnival people... is about how heavy I get. That's they they got some heavy songs though, man. So they I do. mean, they're yeah, yeah that's they're like really the limit good. for me. I they're didn't get really much good. heavier than that. Yeah. Well, let's let's get to it. Hopefully, this is the right uh, thing that I uploaded here. Let's let's check out this beautiful trailer. You speak as though I have conquered death. I live death every day. I am surrounded by it. Smothered by it. Look at you now. He would have everlasting life. You seek to defy death. But you cannot even defy sleep. And I will like sleep is to death. is a painted death. There you go. Nice. I love that trailer, man. Is that now I I found that one. Is that the right one? That is the right one. Okay, yes. Good, I don't think there's any one out there, I think. I'm okay. Sure. I, that's what I thought. I just wanted did to make you, sure. Do you have to like like uh not drink water for like Half a day to do that, or had how do you keep that? I don't you know. Seek if I can to do defy that. death. <laughs> you just get up really close, and you really whisper. Close you whisper, and then just, and yeah. then you go into audacity, and you <laughs> put in some reverbs. Oh, you can audacity. play around with the bass and the treble and. Cool. Uh, nice. yep. Yeah, you, you yeah, got it's a great it. video. I like it, and I, yeah. I heard you talking. <laughs> I heard you talking uh, with Irene, and I, I don't know, I think it was on your channel, uh, how the way you name these, you go by beat. Uh, yes. That was pretty interesting. Yeah, I so like that. Yeah. Uh, ah. Kind of like yeah. syllables. Painted yeah. death, waking yeah. dream, fractured yeah, like mind. It, it, yeah, so it, 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 awesome. She had a good point awesome. that it kind of keeps that in your head. Like, you, when you hear it, you're like, oh, that's that's lucent. Like, you can just hear the Yeah, the yeah. Beat, the it it, it, it wouldn't work if it was the lucent, the wondrous mind of... <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. I, I don't think that would work too much. So, yeah. so to those who are have been living under a rock, uh, tell tell and well, people on Facebook that are my friends, they may not know. Uh, tell us about the Lucid. I've got a um, I've got a cool little uh, cool little blurb here on the ca on the uh, campaign page. So this is the home page of the campaign. This is the introduction to the Lucid. You know, it tells you a little bit about the kinds of stuff that's available, but also. Um, some updates on where the campaign is at, but also just, you know, a little bit on the book itself. You can see that trailer and stuff. And it's, so because it's an ongoing series, I feel like I need to do two pitches almost. The first one is about the Lucent. The second one is about, okay, well, what's happening in Painted Death. So to give the grand overall view, it's uh, it's the one that's written down here. You know, we've got this, there's this secret, there's this knowledge, this long forgotten truth that's been hidden from everyone. Mm. Well, not everyone. There are a select number of people who are aware of it. And the key to kind of unlocking this secret, this truth, is through our dreams. Um, and there's this secret order. So, you know, that you see a lot of this old stuff here in the book. Mm -hmm. um, the story reaches back, all the way back to even before civilization itself and uh you know there's the secret order that's existed for thousands of years who are kind of um you know keeping this knowledge to themselves and they're gonna they're gonna do what it takes to make sure it remains that way so that's sort of the that's the that's the setting that's the premise right. and right. as Nawal would say um it's it's really cool because there's no way to disprove that this it doesn't mm -hmm. exist in our world because you and I wouldn't know about this if if it did exist. It's all mm -hmm. hidden, clever, very clever. hiding in plain sight. And I think that really adds to it. So what I've done, a lot of like to do is, you know, a lot of the when you go through history, especially a lot of the stuff is taken from real mythology and from real historical events. 
so in the in this book pain of death we uh you know we meet um we meet gilgamesh meaning utnapishtim which is taken from the epic of gilgamesh mm -hmm. which is our very oldest story that we have as humans i think it's yep. six thousand years old mm -hmm. um in the next book in the third one we start at, in uh acadia during the sacking of uh, akkad uh which oh, was the wow. which was the um the the city that uh sargon of akkad the uh, yeah form um so yeah it, it, it kind of follows throughout history this character that is for all intents and purposes a mortal anyway getting <laughs> sidetracked here <laughs> fast forward to the present day ella also doesn't know that any of this exists but she does have very unusual dreams where every night she's visited by this guy you see this in waking dream and he's teaching her these things she just thinks it's a dream Anyway, she finds out at the end of uh, Waking Dream, you know, it might be something more. It might be a lot more than just mm. a dream. And uh, now in Paint of Death, it's all out in the open. So uh, her life has essentially been turned upside down. She's now kind of on the run, almost. And uh, at, the, at any rate, that secret order I mentioned, they uh, they want her now. You know, the, the, she's like Ooh. priority number one. For them she's kind of like so, a neo of the story in some way yeah yeah exactly okay. or, or luke skywalker um oh, you know yeah. someone who's just like finding out discovering that this world exists this greater world mm. you know the jedi neo found out about the matrix um and you know she has to come to terms with that and you know eventually obviously she's the main character so you know yeah. she is going to be quite important very pivotal in this whole story in terms of you know her connection to it and everything she's not just a, a bit player in this greater story nice now uh what do you have available on the uh, site because this isn't on indiegogo or kickstarter or anything right this is strictly on your site for now for now yeah right. and right. it probably will be i'll probably end up extending it to 60 days just like we would an indiegogo um gotcha. and that was i hadn't decided that uh, I know people say that a lot of the time, but I didn't know. Yeah, you know, it seems like there is great momentum on the site. I didn't it know is. if there would be. Um, so uh, yeah, it will probably will extend it because at some point I would like to do a fan art contest and everything. I would still ah. like to keep all that on the site. Awesome. Um, and then eventually, you know, I will put it up on all the other platforms um, as this kind of this kind of outreach. FMC. Uh, thing. Well. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, yeah. Everywhere, everywhere, I, everywhere that well, will take me. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, this is a business. Like, yeah, we love doing this. We love telling stories. We love doing art. We love writing them. But it is a business, and you want to get as much finances as you can. And to just go on one mm. one platform, one place it, at this point in the game is almost foolish. Like, you kind of want to be out on many sites as you can and try to get as much income yeah. as you can to further your yeah. business. Now, that's not to say this isn't a love, but you got to separate the two so to me yeah. it's all about this number here growing the backer number yep and you know you do that one at a time mm -hmm. uh, so even you know you go on to fund my comic indiegogo kickstarter whatever it is if there's an opportunity for someone else who hadn't ever seen your book before because that's what those platforms are for it's so you know right. people get brought there for other things and then they see yours as well right um that's invaluable and, it, and it's worth it because yeah it is so hard to find new readers and new backers in comics we all right. know that and that's um, also why we ju we jump on as many live streams that that yeah. also go out to so many different platforms also like yeah. the little guy to the big guy you, you go on as many as you can to help grow that backer number two so it's 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 a lot of work but yeah it, you, you want to get that growing so you have uh, obviously you have uh, painted death on here what else do you have available on your website so we've got uh, mm -hmm. there's a digital you can get the soft cover you can get a hard cover now that's like new that. yes not new. only can you get hard cover you can get two hard covers what? and uh if we look at it they are oversized so if i show you that's the size there so Ooh, that's the nice. standard oh, hold on standard comic book size come on and then you. that is the size mm -hmm. of the uh of the mm. thing it's not full wow. bundesna but you can see it is pretty big i it's mean the bundesna are even bigger than that um you know wow. they, they go up even bigger oh geez uh but this size is like 
<laughs> if you're not printing in France, uh, you know, with <laughs> yeah, a big no publisher, point. that's just that's not attainable. And I, even I couldn't even ship these. These are so no, that would you cost have to get a whole much. new yeah. mailer. But this will fit in my um, quick pack mailers that I have, nice. and and it is bigger. I mean, it right. is. This is. If you haven't read a, a bigger, an oversized comic, it is something special about there, and, it. Well, and the artwork stands out a lot more, too. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I did, if you scroll down here. So there are the, that's the soft cover cover, which is just recently. Actually, if I scroll up, check this out. I just added this to the campaign. Um, wow. Look at this. Wait, wait, wait. Ooh, you see that? look at that. <laughs> Even I saw that. Part. That's nice. Look at you being all so, fancy. Uh, yeah, that... <laughs> That unlocked yesterday, so the um, the soft cover will get a UV spot on all the windows there. Nice. Uh, so that's going to look really cool. And that's part of why I conceptualized. I wanted her falling down a hole. Right. That's yeah. what I knew I wanted. I'm always having Ella fall because that's part of that's what Those it is. Those are the She's worst dreams. The rabbit hole. Just want to say. What's Maybe that? Just a dream. The dream when you're sleeping and all of a sudden you exactly you wake up, you jolt exactly <sighs> yeah, you get it you get yeah, it um so the uh but you know I, I like the idea of well what if she's not falling down she's falling up and this actually this Ooh. is actually sort of a, a bit of a representation of an event that takes place in the book so it fit and then on top of that well buildings have windows that would be cool for the uv spot i was able to do the uv spot on the first book i yep. would love to do it on the second book so yeah, that's um. See, I hate that, you because of this cool. though, because I want the UV spot now to go along with my first book, but I also want those hardcovers. So now I want to back like too many times. Yeah, I hate <laughs> you for that. <laughs> well, like, look, okay. I want all of it. <laughs> two things. Two things on that. Uh, you can get it in the bundle. You get mm -hmm. it. It's slightly discounted. So oh, nice. Okay. Um, you know this this isn't the cost. Of, I think the 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 hardcovers are forty dollars each. The soft cover yeah. is twenty five. Put all that together, I think that's a hundred and five. Yeah, hundred and five dollars. Sure. Whereas if you get it in the bundle, it's only ninety five. So that's Ooh, how I, like I sort that. of set up the campaign. So the more you get, the less you pay per book. Obviously, it's a larger oh, price, but it's, yeah, it's more value. I mean, you don't want to lose money on this, Jason. Correct. Uh, so, Correct. Um, <laughs> but uh, I, I, I did the hard covers. I wanted to do it just like the uh, so many of the French books are they have a really cool painted cover and mm -hmm. i wanted to do that as well i've always wanted to do that and i thought well now's the time to to do it and i couldn't be happier with how these came out um i think they're gonna really they're they're really uh, nice those are beautiful illustrations my friend yeah and I've, I've done test prints and they print so well nice um it's gonna awesome. yeah i'm so happy with that so yeah, yeah. you can get two there's hard covers, there's soft covers, there's catch up tiers. Um, you can check out the interiors. On this campaign for the first time ever, I've got a t shirt. I see that. As well. I like that. And you still have the yeah. puzzles. You have a puzzle. You still have the puzzles. But uh, I'm, I'm super excited about the t shirt. We've sold 64. When nice. this gets to 100, I think I'm just going to print them. And then I'm oh, going to give people yeah. the option if they want. And now it's going to cost a little bit of extra shipping. I don't know how much that shipping will be. If they want, you know, and I've got them printed, I could send them out separate now. Right. Um, or, you know, cool. if you want to buy it again or whatever, if you haven't bought, bought one yet, you can buy it and receive it now. Right. Um, yeah, I like that you've... But uh, we're a little bit away off that. Right. Um, but uh, very happy with the with the T-shirt. That looks great. And do you have original art on here too? Is that what that is? I did. Yeah. Well, I do. I do. So I have my original art. That sold out day one. I had the oh, wow, uh, cover. Nice and the t-shirt original art and then i have all these rod looper pages these are the, oh. this is fractured mind this is rod looper is a beast he's an assassin yeah, yeah he's so good such a nice guy too he is um he's, he's an absolute gun artist and look at the sum of the stuff he was doing on these pages this one's sold you can't get this anymore but i mean check out oh, this wow uh you know that's the sort of stuff you're going to be getting and that's wild he, he wanted to make sure that he sent me scans of the art that has been completely untouched, so that people could see the the, the um you know the brush strokes right. and the sort of washes and stuff. Um, you know, this a lot of this stuff just gets darkened out when you do when you go to print, but you know right. if you get the original, you got to see the actual so stuff. Cool. But the new, there's still three pages of that yeah. left. 
Nice. Um, they all feature Ella in it, so you know they're all uh, you know good really pages, good yeah. pages. Um, and that's from a book, Fractured Mind, which he and I are working on. That mm -hmm. my YouTube members are paying for to the creation of. You know, essentially that's how I get the wage to be able to pay Rod's right. page yeah. rate because uh, he's not cheap and he shouldn't be. He, I would <laughs> say like, not. don't sell yourself short, Rod. But yeah. um, he, uh, nice. the um, we are doing a so on this book on this campaign I'm putting out a 12 page ash can of uh, of that book. <clears throat> It'll have eight pages of art in it wow. in black and white, no um, letters That's or anything. So it's just sweet. Rod's art. And what I did is the pencil sketch you talked about earlier. I did another one of them. Uh, if I can. No, you won't be able to see it. It's too light. Oh, kind a of. A little bit. There oh, there it is. I see A little it. bit. There it is. So I'm printing out the pencils on the oh, um, that's cool. thing. And then I'm inking in different colored pens. Oh, yeah. So for different tiers. So look, there's Look there's at you. Silver. That's so cool, man. There's bronze. And then oh, there's I'm gold, really depending on, like on which. Oh, yeah, yeah. On what, which, uh, which tier you get. So... I never you seen like anyone that. mentioned platinum. And what was the thing? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. The camel said you got to make a platinum. I was like, well, yeah, I'll try the chrome pen. As maybe a special, like I'll, I'll make, I don't know, yeah. five of them available or something. But um, I'll, uh, yeah. So they're available. Uh, I'm trying to, I'm trying to scroll up on the stream. Yeah, that's why that won't work. <laughs> they're available here as bundles. They're the sort of big bundles. You know, the different tiers. You can just get the, the. Um, the new painted death books you can get the new books which includes the waking so dream cool. hardcover you can get all the books together oh wow and nice. uh, if you were signed up to this mailing list you would have gotten secret links for this where you don't pay any shipping on these perks oh, i gotta check my email um yeah yeah and then one. as well i mean there's so much on this campaign i feel like i'm uh that's what i love right now i love this website dude i love it thank yeah. you yeah i'm pretty happy job. with it yeah. and the cool thing about it is you get to do things you can't do on indiegogo like coupon codes so there's mm -hmm. a free shipping coupon code that's only available for people who've already backed so if you've backed something before and now maybe i add something like i'm about to uh, although I, the uh the sketch cards are free shipping anyway because they're so small but right. if i were to add something else like a new puzzle or i don't know maybe a um a, a, a chrome uh sketch hit, uh ash can then yeah you could just type in free shipping into your into your checkout and as long as you've backed the campaign already you won't pay ah, shipping again that's awesome i'm trying to make Very it 15 dollars cool. flat shipping um right you make it as competitive as i possibly can and uh yeah so that's and that's one of the really cool things you can do on top of lots of other little cool things you can do on your own site um yeah. including add a whole bunch of puzzles <laughs> I think this one is the most popular puzzle thus far. Um, oh, yeah, is, people like your puzzle. So oh, this yeah, is yeah. the this is the cover to the hardcover hard of Painted yeah. Death, but it's the actual full landscape version. So you get oh. the full art because that's cropped in on the um yeah it has to be cropped on the cover. Oh, yeah. so wait, there's there's only one. I'm sorry, I am, I was listening. I thought when I read over your website, I thought there was more. <laughs> oh yeah, 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 no, there are. There's, there's a the lot of puzzles. Popular. Yeah. He there just said that's, that's people's favorite. Yeah, that's people's uh, favorite. So there's okay. five at the moment, yeah. and I'll be adding more as soon as I've pretty much done the coloring. Uh, there's a page with the the big wave. Uh, there's the Paris uh, Eiffel oh. Tower. People, Which one that people really are waiting good. for. That was crazy. Yeah, I've got to get to that though. <laughs> that's gonna <laughs> that's gonna be a a really that's gonna be a task to color that one. So yeah, dude. I'm kind of putting that off. I understand. Um, trying to get pages done, but yeah, there's five different puzzles available in two different and three different sizes. You can get five hundred, nice. one thousand, nice. two thousand for the mad lads or mad whams. Um, and yeah, for the first time, I'm shipping these ones out myself, uh, which means wow. people unfortunately have to wait. Whereas previously, they could get them straight away. Uh, it's it's no longer working. I don't know. I don't know what it is. Inflation, currency rates Probably. have gone up. But I couldn't make it work. But um, yeah, so I'll be shipping them out myself. Wow. Uh, when when the book's finished. Nice. 
Yeah, and I mean, not only to promote the Lucent and to have you on because, you know, we're friends, uh, but I really wanted to show people the website. I think it's fantastic. You did a killer job. Inkspots and I are, you know, we have a we have a website, but it's not up because he's working on it off and on. And this mm -hmm. is a great model to go off of. I mean, you did a beautiful job on this. It, it's easily accessible. Everything's categorized. Everything's good. I love this website, dude. You did great. Thank you, man. Yeah, I'm yeah. super happy with it. I've been going around saying this is the best looking website in all of comics. I'll, you You're know, not I'm going to be my number one fan. I'm <laughs> really happy with how it came out. I and I love how that it you know it's it's cost me probably cost me fifty dollars in add-ons wow. and stuff like that That's uh, awesome. to yeah. make you know they they make it pretty easy uh, you know obviously you got to pay a, a monthly fee on Shopify so this isn't going right. to be for everyone you know if you're just starting out and you don't know if anyone's going right. you know, to back your book you probably want to go to fund my comic or Indiegogo or Kickstarter one of those places um, but if you've yeah if you know you're going to get some sales. Uh, look, I would absolutely uh, encourage it. Uh, you can set up how you want it. How, you know, I've got a little homepage for introduction. I'll be adding character stuff, just like Greeny has. You know, she's she has That's a cool. website where she gets to flesh out the yep. world of her. Her comic. website's really dope too. Yeah. Exactly. So you know, that'll be on the homepage, and then I get to have the campaign section. Um, yeah, it, it works. Uh, oh, yeah. speaking of. Um, so Eric Weathers is going to be doing one for Battlebrook Road. I just announced uh -huh. that, uh, and I will be announcing on email shortly that uh, he will be. He's the forty-five k stretch goal uh, for um, for the campaign. Whoa. So when you oh, reach forty-five thousand, he will become the let the official Lucent letterer again. He'll be uh, rehired. Oh, You'll hit that yeah. without a doubt. Yeah, Eric's Eric's no great. Uh, are you still working with Joe? Yeah, 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 absolutely. Okay. I want no, to make I have sure. To. I have to. Yeah, because he he uh, he really did a great job on your first book. So uh, oh, yeah, man. I wanted, yeah, yeah. Without without Joe, I don't know where I would. It was have a little been. cluttered. Um, <laughs> it was a little cluttered. <laughs> but... <laughs> yeah, he no, really he really kind of how do you he sort of you know you just chip away at it. You chisel mm -hmm. away the unnecessary stuff and get mm -hmm. the story out of it. I just right. watched um. I just watched the Indiana Jones thing, and I said, uh, "There's a uh, there's a, a movie that's at least as good as the Crystal Skull one, about an hour and a half long movie. But unfortunately, the movie that they put out was two and a half hours. <laughs> so oh, they no. cut out an hour of it, and there was almost a good movie in there. Oh, almost, it's saying. the same thing in C comics. C cut out an hour in Phoebe, Phoebe, and it's a good movie. Yeah, maybe all her." <laughs> oh, oh my and i yeah. want to do a, a fan art contest so i think that's a yeah. big one so i think i'll make that the 50k cool. stretch yeah. goal awesome. yeah make sure i'm still in my sling when you do it because i just crush everyone so you know yeah that way no, I can. I hear you. <laughs> but we're almost at the we're almost at the 45 000. you're almost there you'll hit it far away you'll you'll definitely hit that i mean the book is beautiful it's well written the concept is really unique uh and every i Everyone should back this. This is even when did the Lucent one got uh, shipped out in 2021, right? Or 2022? 2022. 2022, I think. Yeah. Yeah, and everybody even said that was the best book of the year mm -hmm. uh, that came out in CG that year. So uh, they're not wrong. Everybody should pick it up, and if you if, if they don't have it, and get the second book, if you want to find out what happens. Yeah, so, I've been selling them. I've been selling uh, the second editions. Pretty much the whole time. You know, I, I love that this, cover on that the, second edition. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I did yes, the. Yes, I um, love that cover too. The uh, second chance campaign to really test out this site to make sure right. I was knew what I was doing. I didn't want to do the big launch on a new site that I really oh. had no idea how yeah. it would all work and everything. So I've been selling that cover the whole time, um, and just today I got another one. Um, Ruby Jade, uh, who who might recognize her in the chat she mm -hmm. she tweeted out that yeah she got it she loved it she's hooked hooked straight away and i was like <laughs> oh that's so cool i've got tons of tweets like that from um people who've read it so i'm super blessed on that front and yeah. uh if uh, yeah anyone who sends me something like that I'll, I'll retweet it out and yeah let people know that this is a this is a book worth reading 
it, yeah, like I said, everybody really everybody good. loves it. Everybody loves it. So, yeah. uh, and everyone knows I'm an art guy. I'm, I'm mainly like an artist first, writer second, or third or fourth, whatever. I don't consider myself even a writer, but the, the visuals on this book are stunning. Like, it, it, you came out of the gate swinging for sure. So, uh, you set the bar pretty high for people who are coming in new. Uh, yeah. as a new creator from your first book so you know and that's but that's the way it should be things should be set high for this you should expect great quality Absolutely. on a cg you know and that's why we're here we're here to compete against like not just compete against the big two but make better products than the big two and mm -hmm. without a doubt i mean this they can't compare to this i mean this is beautiful so. it's the only way that we're ever going to make any kind of impact on the scene and the, the greater comic yes. book scene right is if you know you become so undeniable that everyone wants to read it and they get past the whole tribal um is this cg book is this is this from someone who's a conservative is this an i only write i only read, this, I only read that yep. brand like just you know we're only gonna make a real dent on the scene if we can yeah. reach people who haven't read comics in a while or you know they're, they're not it tapped into this whole culture war business i got a uh i got a a, an email from someone yesterday he said I, this this is the first graphic novel i've purchased in 37 years <laughs> wow <laughs> nice. that's a, like that's amazing and that's, that's the sort awesome. of thing i think you know we have to be striving for and we're not going to do that if we're not putting out something that's pretty special so yeah and, and i see so many people putting out really special stuff the only thing we don't have going for us is we don't have you know massive platforms but i think that will just continue to grow as long as we're putting out good stuff yeah and as long as we're talking about everything and and and, and, and also that yeah. like people in the chat or watching on facebook or whatever you you can help too even if you can't back right now or you can't support share out the share out the campaign mm -hmm. share out his website yes. like that's a great way to help things out get eyes on these books these projects because like Bancroft is doing the lucid. You're doing it all on your own, except for maybe like Weathers is going to letter it and Joe's editing. But as I, you're doing everything. You're writing it. You're drawing it. You're coloring it. You're, you're, you're doing the whole nine. So it's a self-made project. Like you got one person working on a big projects like this. It's a lot of work. And it, we're putting our hearts and souls into this. Plus, a lot of us are working full-time jobs on top of this full-time job. So yeah. you got to love this to do it. And you can tell Bancroft definitely loves this, So, um, which is why uh, I respect you highly, sir. Um, one last question before we go. If you could work with anyone, living or dead, writer, artist, whatever, who would it be? Kenneth Roquefort, probably. There you go. Nice. Imagine a Kenneth Roquefort side book, a 32-page Kenneth Roquefort Lucent book. That would be now insanely. That, that would be that would be gorgeous. Is something. <laughs> that would be I would, something, uh, dude. <laughs> I would break a lot of my own rules just to get that. Yeah. I I understand that. Uh, are there any last questions in the chat? Because uh, we're at the top of the hour, Angela. Um. No. A lot of just a lot of praises in the top of you, Bancroft. Just. Yeah. just Thank you, everyone. How your book? Yeah, um, yeah. Well, I've been been I've been absolutely blown away by the support. Uh, Grace of God and Glory Strax. Yeah, mm -hmm. there's a lot of yeah. people really yeah. enjoying. No, I'm, I'm honored to be sort of... and yeah, so I'm excited. Dude, you've 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 put the work in, like, I'm YouTube and in your book, mm -hmm. and like you've done you've done in, you've done an insane amount of effort on this, and the reward is well deserved because it's it's quality. It's quality. If it, if it sucked, yeah. you, you wouldn't be you know it wouldn't you just wouldn't be at the level that you're at. But it's high quality work. It's great work, and you're a yeah. genuine individual because you see you on streams and stuff, so you could see through bs and there's no bs there like you are who you are so people That's like me, especially that. if you're someone who streams as much as me i've been streaming yeah. almost every day for about three or four years now yep. on multiple channels yeah you can't you can't have bs because i've seen that happen to people before where they they put on an act they start exaggerating things eventually it all catches up to you because eventually you'll forget what you've said so yep yeah, I, I I always make sure it's like or you forget you know, to take your mask be genuine. off. Otherwise, or yeah, you you try on. and pretend that you're someone <laughs> right. cool or whatever. Well, you just and it's not only that; you also help promote too. Like you help promote, and you 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 keep an eye on good projects, and you promote these quality projects, these books, and and you do like not yeah. only are you in the scene as as a creator, but you're in it as a promoter and a fan. So you really love everything about this. That's why people respect you and people like you because you're the you're the package. Uh, much like me so yeah but uh, uh 
Michael the Package Bankrupt. <laughs> Michael the Package Bankrupt. Oh my uh, do you have any? Do you have any uh, last words, Mr. Bancroft? Um, just uh, yeah, find my channel, Michael Bancroft. Uh, I'm at, the at the Lucent Comic on Twitter and Instagram. Mel runs my Instagram, and she's doing a fan fantastic job over mm -hmm. there. She knows how to Instagram. I don't Yay, really yeah, know Mel. how to Instagram, so she does all the stories and things like that. A massive shout out to Mel, by the way, fulfillment queen in our house. She just got out cash grab. She's got out almost every single one of the uh, Kickstarter backers uh, this uh, the past couple of days. And yeah, she'll uh, continue to do that stuff. So um, yeah, theloosencomic.com. Check it out. There you go. Check out links in the description um, below as well as pinned to the top of the chat. Yes. Banta wants to know if Bancroft could make an audiobook of the Lucent in his trailer voice. <laughs> the whole thing in the trailer voice? That, that's a lot. I mean, if I did an audiobook, I would do voices. Yes. Very but, nice. Um... I don't know if I'd do the whole thing in that track. That would get yeah, a bit... that's, that's, yeah. I don't think Ella, her voice would fit that too well. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. I would love to hey. do a motion comic. I did a, I did a motion uh, comic. I was, I was talking to Pedro yeah, about that. I was okay. talking to Pedro about that. And um, it's a lot of, it's like a whole nother job, yeah, essentially. It so is. it's not on the cards right now, but I would love that. And with that, I would want voice actors. So that, that would yeah. be a really expensive massive undertaking people are doing it though uh justin yeah. murphy's doing it for war party yeah. so yeah maybe you know if the campaign keeps growing um uh yeah it, it's yep. a possibility i love them i think they're great you, know, you put them on youtube and you could and even help... kind of member gate them or something to, you know so that for a while yeah the paywall uh, so that, yeah yeah exactly um yeah yeah yeah. And uh, Ken cool. mentioned earlier in the chat that she wants to be your number 666 um, uh, buyer. So. I would love for that to happen. That's right. We've got a little <laughs> bit of a way to go. So she's waiting for 665 so she can get on 666. <laughs> so I just want to uh, put that out I'll, there as well. Yeah, well let's make well, that happen, everyone. Let's make it happen, chat. Uh, yeah. yeah, and uh, so, well, thank you, everybody, for watching. Thank you, Bancroft, for doing this. I really appreciate it. Uh, and by the way, hit that like and subscribe. I didn't say it uh, throughout the whole stream because I forget all the time. And also, check out Frog G and Indiegogo. Uh, we're shadow banned. Just type in BascomJason.com in your URL. Yes. It'll take you straight to it. So, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, thank you once again, everybody, and, for watching. And, and uh, the, the Presties at 7 Eastern. Oh, yes. The, we are the fan of the La Presties, and they usually stream at 7 Eastern. So make sure you go subscribe to them and, and, and check them out. So. Uh, I'm hitting the buttons now, so uh, everybody have a great one. Thank you. Yay. Thanks to everyone. Long day